Exodus chapter 37 Bezalel and his workmen are still busy, making one. The ark with the mercy seat and the cherubim, verse 1 9. 2. The table with its vessels, verse 10 16. 3. The candlestick with its appurtenances, verse 17 24. 4. The golden altar for incense, verse 25 28. 5. The holy oil and incense, verse 29. The particular appointment concerning each of which we had before the 25th and 30th chapters. The tabernacle and its furniture. BC 1491, 1 and Bezalel made the ark of shittim wood, 2 cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it, 2 and he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. 3 and he cast for it four rings of gold, to be set by the four corners of it even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. For and he made staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. Five and he put the staves, into the rings by the sides of the ark, to bear the ark and saw six and he made the mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. 7 And he made two cherubims of gold, beaten out of one piece made he them, on the two ends of the mercy seat, eight one cherub on the end on this side, and another cherub on the other end on that side, out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. 9 And the cherubims spread out their wings on high, and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seatward were the faces of the cherubims. 1. It may be thought strange that Moses, when he had recorded so fully the instructions given him upon the mount for the making of all these things, should here record as particularly the making of them, when it might have sufficed only to have said, in a few words, that each of these things was made exactly according to the directions before recited. We are sure that Moses, when he wrote by divine inspiration, used no vain repetitions, there are no idle words in scripture. Why then are so many chapters taken up with this narrative, which we are tempted to think needless and tedious? But we must consider, 1 that Moses wrote primarily for the people of Israel, to whom it would be of great use to read and hear often of these divine and sacred treasures with which they were entrusted. These several ornaments wherewith the tabernacle was furnished they were not admitted to see, but the priests only, and therefore it was requisite that they should be thus largely described particularly to them. That which they ought to read again, lest they should fail of doing it, is written again and again, thus many of the same passages of the history of Christ are in the New Testament related by two or three, and some by four of the evangelists, for the same reason. The great things of God's law and gospel we need to have inculcated upon us again and again. To write the same, says St. Paul, to me is not grievous, but for you it is safe, Philippians 3, 1, 2. Moses would thus show the great care which he and his workmen took to make everything exactly according to the pattern shown him in the mount. Having before given us the original, he here gives us the copy, that we may compare them, and observe how exactly they agree. Thus he appeals to every reader concerning his fidelity to him that appointed him, in all his house, and in all the particulars of it, Hebrews 3, 5. And thus he teaches us to have respect to all God's commandments, even to every iota and tittle of them. 3. 
It is intimated hereby that God takes delight in the sincere obedience of his people, and keeps an exact account of it, which shall be produced to their honor in the resurrection of the just. None can be so punctual in their duty, but God will be as punctual in his notices of it. He is not unrighteous to forget the work and labor of love, in any instance of it, Hebrews 6. 10. 4. The spiritual riches and beauties of the gospel tabernacle are hereby recommended to our frequent and serious consideration. Go walk about this Zion, view it and review it. The more you contemplate the glories of the church, the more you will admire them and be in love with them. The charter of its privileges, and the account of its constitution, will very well bear a second reading. 2. In these verses we have an account of the making of the ark, with its glorious and most significant appurtenances, the mercy seat and the cherubim. Consider these three together, and they represent the glory of a holy God, the sincerity of a holy heart, and the communion that is between them, in and by a mediator. 1. It is the glory of a holy God that he dwells between the cherubim, that is, is continually attended and adored by the blessed angels, whose swiftness was signified by their faces being one towards another. 2. It is the character of an upright heart that, like the Ark of the Testimony, it has the law of God hid and kept in it. 3. By Jesus Christ, the great propitiation, there is reconciliation made, and a communion settled, between us and God, he interposes between us and God's displeasure, and not only so, but through him we become entitled to God's favor. If he write his law in our heart, he will be to us a God and we shall be to him a people. From the mercy seat he will teach us, there he will accept us, and show himself merciful to our unrighteousness, and under the shadow of his wings we shall be safe and easy. 10 And he made the table of shittim wood, two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof, eleven and he overlaid it with pure gold, and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. Twelve also he made thereunto a border of in hand breadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. Thirteen and he cast for it four rings of gold and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Fourteen over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. Fifteen and he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold, to bear the table. Sixteen and he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes, and his spoons, and his bowls and his covers to cover with all, of pure gold. 17 And he made the candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work made he the candlestick, his shaft, and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers, were of the same. 18 And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof, nineteen three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower, so throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick. Twenty and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops, and his flowers, twenty-one and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Twenty-two their knops and their branches were of the same, all of it was one beaten work of pure gold. Twenty-three and he made his seven lamps, and his snuffers, 
and his snuff dishes, of pure gold. Twenty-four of a talent of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. Here is, one. The making of the table on which the showbread was to be continually placed. God is a good householder, that always keeps a plentiful table. Is the world his tabernacle? His providence in it spreads a table for all the creatures, he provides food for all flesh. Is the church his tabernacle? His grace in it spreads a table for all believers, furnished with the bread of life. But observe how much the dispensation of the gospel exceeds that of the law. Though here was a table furnished, it was only with show bread, bread to be looked upon, not to be fed upon, while it was on this table, and afterwards only by the priests, but to the table which Christ has spread in the new covenant all real Christians are invited guests, and to them it is said, Eat, O friends, come eat of my bread. What the law gave but a sight of at a distance, the gospel gives the enjoyment of and a hearty welcome to. 2. The making of the candlestick, which was not of wood overlaid with gold, but all beaten work of pure gold only. 5. 17, 22. This signified that light of divine revelation with which God's church upon earth, which is his tabernacle among men, has always been enlightened being always supplied with fresh oil from Christ the good olive, Zechariah 4, 2, 3. God's manifestations of himself in this world are but candlelight compared with the daylight of the future state. The Bible is a golden candlestick, it is of pure gold, Psalm 19, 10. From it light is diffused to every part of God's tabernacle that by it his spiritual priests may see to minister unto the Lord, and to do the service of his sanctuary. This candlestick has not only its bowls for necessary use, but its knops and flowers for ornament, there are many things which God saw fit to beautify his word with which we can no more give a reason for them for these knops and flowers, and yet we are sure that they were added for a good purpose. Let us bless God for this candlestick, have an eye to it continually, and dread the removal of it out of its place. 25 And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of it a cubit, it was four square, and two cubits was the height of it, the horns thereof were of the same. 26 And he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it, also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. 27 And he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it with all. 28 And he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. 29 And he made the holy anointing oil, and the pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the apothecary. Here is, 1. The making of the golden altar, on which incense was to be burnt daily, which signified both the prayers of saints and the intercession of Christ, to which are owing the acceptableness and success of those prayers the rings and staves, and all the appurtenances of this altar, were overlaid with gold, as all the vessels of the table and candlestick were of gold, for these were used in the holy place. God is the best, and we must serve him with the best we have, but the best we can serve him within his courts on earth is but as brass, compared with the gold, the sinless and spotless perfection with which his saints shall serve him in his holy place above. 2. The preparing of the incense which was to be burnt upon this altar, and with it the holy anointing oil verse 29, according to the dispensatory, 
Chapter 30. 22, etc. God taught Bezalel this art also, so that though he was not before acquainted with it yet he made up these things according to the work of the apothecary, as dexterously and exactly as if he had been bred up to the trade. Where God gives wisdom and grace, it will make the man of God perfect, thoroughly furnished to every good work.